Hi, I'm George Woodbury from College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California, and in this video I'll be continuing my five-part final exam review for my intermediate algebra class. In this review we'll go over quadratic equations, quadratic inequalities, and rational inequalities. To begin with our first equation, solve x plus 3 quantity squared minus 11 equals 38. This equation is an ideal candidate for extracting square roots. Whenever you have an equation that has one square containing a variable and all the other terms are constants, extracting square roots is a wise uh, way to proceed. We begin by isolating the square. I'll add 11 on both sides of the equation. And I have x plus 3 quantity squared now equal to 49. We want to peel the pieces away from x. And we do that by getting rid of the square first. Take the square root of both sides. So the square root of x plus 3 quantity squared equals the square root of 49. And remember that we put that as plus or minus the square root of 49. The reason is we know that 7 squared is 49, but also negative 7 squared is as well. Uh, simplifying the square roots, I have x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 49 is 7. I want to subtract the 3 to isolate x. Oops, sorry. So that's negative 3 plus or minus 7. Now I'll find my two solutions. Negative 3 plus 7 equals 4. Negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10. So my solution set, negative 10, positive 4. Okay. This equation can be solved in a couple of different ways. Um, First, we should always check to see if we can factor, and I can't determine that until I get this in standard form. So I'm going to subtract the 12 over to the left-hand side. So x squared plus 8x minus 12 equals 0. Uh, this does not factor with a negative 12. So at this point, I can go to the quadratic formula with a equaling 1, b being positive 8, and c as negative 12. Going to the quadratic formula, it's the opposite of b, so that's negative 8, plus or minus the square root. b squared is 8 squared, minus 4ac, that's 4, times 1, times negative 12, all divided by 2 times a, which is 2 times 1. We'll simplify with the radicand first, and the denominator second. Uh, 8 squared is 64 this product turns into a plus 48, so that's going to be 112 all divided by 2. 112 is the same as 4 times 28. 28 is 4 times 7. So this is 4 times 4 times 7. Uh, that tells me that I can take out a 4 from this square root. So right now I have negative 8 plus or minus 4 square root 7 divided by 2. And I can reduce this fraction dividing out a common factor of 2. Negative 4 plus or minus 2 square root 7. The denominator is 2 divided by 2, which turns into 1. Okay. Um, I do want to make note that this could have been solved in this fashion by completing the square. It's in the correct form the coefficient of x is an even number, which makes it ideal for completing the square. If I take half of 8 and square it, I get 16. If I add 16 to both sides, I have this in the form now where I can uh, factor the left side and solve. This turns into x plus 4 squared equals 28. I can take the square root of both sides, like we did in the last example. This is going to be plus or minus the square root of 28. x plus 4 equals plus or minus. 28 is 4 times 7, so I can rewrite that as 2 square root 7, and just subtract the 4. Negative 4 minus plus or minus 2 square root of 7. Okay. Two different techniques to go. Use the one that's more efficient for you. I'm writing this as a solution set, negative 4 minus 2 square root 7, negative 4 plus 2 square root 7. 
In this example, we'll take a look at what's known as u substitution. If I let u equal x squared, this equation translates to be u squared plus u minus 2 equals 0. This is a pretty good approach whenever the largest exponent in a trinomial is twice the next highest exponent. In other words, when your first term, your leading term, has a degree that's double that of the next highest term, uh, u substitution works pretty well because then we can change it into a quadratic equation. Uh, this one factors u plus 2 times u minus 1 equals 0. This gives me two solutions, uh, u equals negative 2 or u equals positive 1. Then we unsubstitute x squared equals negative 2 or x squared equals positive 1. Take the square root of both sides. The square root of negative 2 is plus or minus i square root 2. Uh, here we have the square root of 1, which is 1, so plus or minus 1. And my solution set I'll write up here uh, negative i root 2 i root 2 negative 1 positive 1. This is a quadratic inequality or more generally a polynomial inequality. We're looking for the critical values first and those are the locations where x squared plus 2x minus 63 is equal to 0. Uh, this I can solve by factoring x plus 9 times x minus 7. Again, if you couldn't factor that that quickly, go ahead and use the quadratic formula. The two critical values are negative 9 and positive 7. So on the number line, I'm going to put an open circle at negative 9 and another one at positive 7. This breaks my number line into three intervals and I need to select a value from each interval, say negative 10, 0, and positive 8. Those are going to be my test points. I'm going to set up a sign chart to do this, although you could just substitute each of these values into the original inequality to see if they make them true or false. Instead, I'm going to substitute into each of my two factors, determine the sign, and determine the product. Uh, negative 10 plus 9 is negative 1, so that's negative. Negative 10 minus 7, that's negative 17, also negative. And a negative times a negative is a positive. Plug in 0, 0 plus 9 is positive, 0 minus 7 is negative, so that product, positive times negative, is negative. Finally, plug in the 8, 8 plus 9, and 8 plus 7, 8 minus 7 are both positive. When we multiply two positive values, the result is positive. Were we looking for a positive or a negative product? Well, less than 0, the numbers that are less than 0 are negative, so we were looking for a negative product. That tells us that 0 is a solution, as well as all the other values in that interval. So I'm going to shade in between negative 9 and 7, and in interval notation, our solution, negative 9 comma 7, left to right. Again, the parentheses are used because the open circles tell us that the endpoints are not solutions of the inequality. All right, we'll take it up a notch from here to a rational inequality. Um, we need to find the critical values of the numerator and the denominator. And here I'm just going to quickly factor the numerator, x plus 8 times x minus 1, your standard trinomial, two values that multiply to negative 8 but add to 7. The denominator is a difference of squares. That's x plus 7 times x minus 7. So our critical values of x are negative 8, positive 1 from the numerator, negative 7 and positive 7 from the denominator. Notice here this is a weak inequality. We're looking for where it's greater than or equal to 0. The 
two values that come from the numerator will get closed circles on the number line because they make the numerator equal to zero, which makes the whole expression equal to zero. The two from the denominator will get open circles because a denominator of zero is produces a fraction that's undefined. We can't divide by zero. So those two values cannot be solutions and we'll put open circles in their place. Let's go ahead and give this a try. I'm going to list the test points. Negative eight, oops, sorry. Before I can figure that out, on the number line, we've got a closed circle at negative eight. I also have an open circle at negative seven, a closed circle at positive one, and an open circle at positive seven. Those four values break the number line into five intervals. So for test points, I'm going to select to the left of negative eight, negative nine. Between negative eight and negative seven, negative 7.5. Between negative seven and one, zero. Between one and seven, two. Now notice there, I chose two. I could have picked three, four, 6.67, anything between one and seven. And finally, the last interval, greater than seven, I'll take eight. I'm gonna list all the factors and we'll build our sign chart. Um, when negative nine gets substituted in, all four of these expressions are negative. Negative nine plus eight, negative nine minus one, negative nine plus seven, and negative nine minus seven. When I substitute in negative 7.5, the only change, negative 7.5 plus eight is a positive 0.5, positive. The other three are all negative. Uh, with zero, plus eight is positive, zero minus one is negative, zero plus seven is positive, zero minus seven is negative. When I plug in two, two plus eight, two minus one, and two plus seven are all positive, but two minus seven is negative. And finally, if you substitute in eight, all four of these factors are positive. Now it doesn't matter that these are coming from the numerator or denominator. Every two negative factors we have will cancel each other out. If there's an odd number of negative factors, the result is negative. So we have four negatives here, that's a positive result. Three negatives, two negatives is positive. Only one negative, the result is negative. And the last result is positive. And here, greater than or equal to zero means that we're looking for a positive result. So that's where the negative nine was, where zero was, and also where eight was. Negative nine is in this first interval. We shade into the left. Zero is between negative seven and one. And finally, eight is to the right of seven. In interval notation, that's negative infinity to negative eight with a bracket union, parentheses negative seven because of the open circle, comma one with a bracket, closed circle, union, seven, comma infinity, with the seven surrounded by a set of parentheses. One last problem to go. The length of a rectangular room is three feet more than twice its width. If the area is 160 square feet, Find the dimensions of the room and round that to the nearest tenth of a foot. So we'll begin with our unknowns. Length and width. And this is pretty common for a rectangle problem. Since the length is given in terms of the width, we will let the width be x. The length is three feet more than that tells me to add three to something. Three feet more than what? Twice its width. Twice its width is two times its width, or two x. The formula for area of a rectangle is length times width equals area. So here, that's gonna be two x plus three times x equals 160. We'll distribute the x to get two x squared plus three X 
and we'll subtract over the 160 simultaneously. Now we have our equation. Now as we look at that equation, uh, can you factor that quickly? If not, we'll move on and solve it by the quadratic formula, and let's do that. So again, it's 2x squared plus 3x minus 160 equals 0. x equals the opposite of b. That's going to be negative 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 3 squared, minus 4ac. a is 2. c is negative 160. All divided by 2a, that's 2 times 2. We'll simplify the discriminant. 3 squared is 9. This turns into plus 1,280. So that's 1,289, all divided by 4. Now in this problem, this is a word problem. We're looking for length and width. We can't have a negative solution. And if I do negative 3 minus the square root, that's going to give me a negative numerator, a negative result, and that can't be. So I only need to worry about the addition. So I use my calculator, and I find that negative 3 plus the square root of 1,289, all divided by 4, is approximately 8.2. Now, the steps depend on the calculator you have. Uh, one thing you can do is find the square root of 1,289, then subtract 3 because it's a negative 3, and then divide that answer by 4. Okay. Going back to our table of unknowns, remember that the length was 2x plus 3. So in our problem, that's going to be 2 times 8.2 plus 3. And that's approximately 19.4 feet. The width was just x. So that's going to be approximately 8.2 feet. If you'd like to check your work, a decent idea would be to multiply these two and make sure that you get a result that's close to 160. And you will. If you have any questions or comments on these or similar problems, if you'd like a copy of the review that we're working on as well as an answer key, or if you've got a request for a video you'd like me to make, go ahead and visit the contact page at georgewoodbury.com. Thanks. Good luck.